time and time again, flat earthers puzzle themselves over the ships disappearing over the horizon hull first. They have tried every trick in the book to explain why we see ships or buildings or bridges or lighthouses that seen at a great distance over a body of water are missing major parts of their lower structures. I already have explained in an earlier video that it cannot be explained away with perspective. However, other explanations are sometimes given. The most common is the statement that this phenomena doesn't happen at all and that zooming in brings back in view the entire structure. These statements are seldom illustrated with any kind of evidence, but sometimes you can find an attempt to validate this point of view. This is an example of such an attempt. By zooming out, the sailboats gradually are getting smaller and at the end they disappear completely. That objects disappear at a certain distance from view isn't what the controv controversy is about. It's the bottom first part that's in question. In the first place, you cannot see whether or not the sailboats disappear bottom first at all. But more importantly, although by zooming in the sailboats get into view completely, it can clearly be seen that they are in front of the horizon. They just aren't far enough away to have their hull obscured by the curved earth. This is the case in most videos disproving the curvature of the earth, as in this fragment. It's a little harder to see, but this boat is clearly still before the horizon. The statement at the end is the same crap all over again. They simply melt into the horizon, which is the limit of our vision for objects of that size. These are three lies in one sentence. The ship doesn't melt into the horizon because it is still before the horizon. The horizon isn't the limit of our vision for objects of that size because we are perfectly able to see objects further away than the horizon. And limit of our vision for objects of that size doesn't mean anything. What size? The size of the ship? We still can see the ship. The size of the hull? We can still see the hull. The size of the lower portion of the hull? What lower portion? Half of it? A quarter of it? Why not the top quarter of the hull and not just the bottom? How come the limit of our vision diminishes only downwards and not upwards? And then there are the lame attempts to debunk the videos that clearly show ships disappearing hull first, as in this fragment. The Earth is round, and this video is being used as proof to, to prove that the Earth is round. But there's a problem with it, and I'm going to show you. Draw a box around this. So if you notice, the water is within this box. The water is below this line, the water is above this line. So we see just a little bit of water below here, but it's basically within the box. Now if you see the ship, now the ship is starting to get inside of the box. So we see the ship appears to be dropping kind of significantly, and this video is being cut, but now look at the water. The water is above the line. Now the water is above the line again. Now the water is even going up. So is this water magically rising? Um, that's and we see the ship is going across now. Let me just all right. Let's just keep this going. We'll come back. And the water. Look how high this water is now. Now it's hard to tell exactly. And this water just dropped. I still see part of the ship there going over. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on here. Are they cutting um, parts of the video out? Are they are they moving the camera down? I mean, what's happening here? What exactly is it that they're doing? What this guy does 
is proving that the horizon in his time lap video isn't at a constant height. His conclusion is that the maker of the video has manipulated the camera in order to achieve the desired effect. He doesn't wonder why the cameraman gradu gradually points his camera at a lower point. Could it be because he wants to get the entire boat in the picture and has to point, a point at a high point as long as the boat is close and large and pointing it downwards to get a more balanced view as the boat moves further away and getting smaller. The argument that this affects the result doesn't hold water anyway because towards the end of the video the horizon lies much lower than in the middle of the video without the ship rising up above the horizon again. Anyway, there is no feasible explanation as to why tilting the camera would have such a spectacular effect. And that's what the cameraman does. He doesn't raise the camera and he certainly doesn't move backwards or even backwards and upwards. In the meantime, the guy trying to debunk this video says some stupid things like the water appears to be going deeper and going further out or <coughs> now the ship appears to be moving over the curvature of the earth sideways which is kind of odd why would the ship go be going sideways or what we see is this mast pretty straight up this last remark refers to the little drawing he made earlier on in his video where he wants us to believe that we should be able to see the tilt of the mast due to the curvature of the earth. This is one of the copy-paste stupidities that flat earthers keep repeating. Say, if that whole ship went over the curvature of the earth, that would have to be at least like 50 feet I'd say. Um, so let's say that's five miles. So that's 16 feet, six miles. So if that was six miles out, then there would be 24 feet of curve. I don't know how tall that ship is with the mass. So let's say seven. So seven miles out, then there would be 33 feet of curve. Or eight miles out, that would be 43 feet of curve, of curvature. So that's just the drop down here which that thing did not look like it was going over curve it clearly looked like it was just some someone edited that video to look like that or zoomed out or did something like that um, so just fakery thank you to um, to this university for region to university of california for providing us some fakery now he ends hilariously he shows a spreadsheet with the 8 inch per mile square formula, doesn't know how far the ship was, doesn't know how high the ship was, calculates a 42 feet drop at 8 miles. I can assure that those types of boats are much higher than 42 feet and that the boat was much farther away than 8 miles. And then he concludes that the boat didn't look like it's going over the curve that the effect looked like it was obtained by editing the video to look like that or by zooming out or doing something like that and finally he ends with the unbelievable unsubstantiated statement that so just fakery thank you to this university the Regent University of California for providing us some fakery so he doesn't even know the difference between the regions of the University of California and the regions University of California, which by the way doesn't exist, providing us with proof of his utter illiteracy. Well, what else do we have? Ah, the mirages, guys. Much of the videos with ships disappearing over the horizon are seriously handicapped by effects that are known as mirages, refraction, looming and such. Those made by flat earthers anyway. Like the one of the red tanker. The maker claims 
that this video proves that the tanker doesn't disappear hull first behind the horizon. She does mention that what we see is a superior mirage, partly right side up and partly wrong side up, an atmospheric anomaly that makes the tanker look like it's floating in the air on top of an inverted image of the same tanker. But you cannot draw conclusions on the basis of such a distorted image. By the way, you can see that the tanker slowly disappears bottom up both in the upright mirage as in the inverted one. Someone that seems to be quite obsessed with these atmospheric phenomena is Rob Skiba, him again. When a photograph was published of the Chicago skyline over Lake Michigan that showed the entire skyline top to bottom at a distance of 84 kilometers, good old Rob was very quick in adopting this item. This shouldn't be possible on a globe Earth. The official explanation for this photograph was that it, it's a mirage. Well, Rob Skiba knew better, of course, and made it a pro project to prove that it was not a mirage. Proving a ne negative is very difficult, so he set himself to prove that this image could be seen at any day under any weather condition. He hopelessly failed in his first attempt, just proving that normally large part of the bottom of the buildings were obscured and proving a spherical earth in doing so. But that couldn't stop him from pursuing in his quest. Luckily for him, the weatherman that has been the first to say that it was a mirage made a video to explain the phenomenon. And Rob Skiba wouldn't be Rob Skiba if he didn't find in it just the proof he needed for his statement that it wasn't a mirage and that the earth therefore was flat. I'll show a fragment of the video by the weatherman as presented by Rob Skiba. What's happening is the light from Chicago is being bent by the cold air above Lake Michigan slightly downwards towards the, the observer here in, in Michigan. And that's, cause, and that's helping the light rays uh, get around the curvature of the Earth, so to speak, so that, so that uh, Chicago can be uh, seen almost all, all the way down to ground level. Let's hear that again. What's happening is the light from Chicago is being bent by the cold air above Lake Michigan slightly downwards towards the, the observer here in, in Michigan. And that's, cause, and that's helping the light rays uh, get around the curvature of the Earth, so to speak, so that, so that uh, Chicago can be uh, seen almost all, all the way down to ground. It's a pity that Rob has overloaded the video with his comments, because the video is a pretty good explanation of refraction, and Rob's comments demonstrate only his utter stupidity. In the first place, there is this comment of his, Wait, what? get around the curvature? I thought refraction bends the light down, not up, over and around. He totally ignores the schematic figure that depicts the trajectory of a light beam that is going up. In fact, it goes more or less horizontally and, as a result of the refraction of the air, bending downwards to the observer. He willfully interprets the word bending down wrong in order to be able to later on turn around everything that was said. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, just maybe you can, now you can just see the top of, uh, of the Sears Tower and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place, hopefully now you can see all of, pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings. Including, including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yes. So this is, if anything, this is definitely a demonstration that, uh, that refraction displaces the, uh, the, the, the image and uh, basically wh wh where you think the image is is not where it actually is. That now infamous picture from a year ago, that's looming, as are these photos that we snap. Triumphantly, he highlights the moment when the photograph is called looming instead of mirage, making himself look stupider even more, because looming is just a form of atmospheric distortion caused by similar effects as a mirage. 
so he can say, you see, didn't I say it wasn't a mirage, it was looming. But it gets even worse. I'll skip a large part of the video and fast forward to Rob's own little arts and crafts project. He, here he uses his very own, very wrong interpretation of refraction by using the term bending down in such a way that it fits his purpose. Um, but I am becoming convinced that we are dealing with atmospheric lensing. Okay, so let's look up some websites dealing with the refraction of light. You might see a graphic something like this, showing light bending downward, just like the weatherman guy said. So, what if this is what's happening? Atmospheric lensing enlarges the city, and we add a little bit of refraction, which brings it down. Is that what happened? Let's look at it from another angle here, from the side view. I'll bring our graphic back in of refraction. Let's go ahead and orient the graphic so it better represents what we're looking at here. I'll angle the light rays to show the density of the air here causing the refraction. And bring our lens in so we can add in our atmospheric lensing. And due to the density of all that air between us and the city 46 miles away, we add a little bit of refraction, bending the light downward, and this is what we end up with. Huh. Just like we saw. And guess what his conclusion is? Refraction causes objects to sink beneath the horizon, and therefore all videos with ships disappearing hell first are all result of atmospheric distortion and not of the Earth being curved. Although Dr. Mark Rennie demonstrated with the lens that refraction causes you to see an object at a higher position than it really is, Mr. Skiba manages to interpret this as that refraction makes you see objects in a lower position than it really is. That is way beyond stupid. That's deceitful. That's falsehood. That's a lie and it's wrong. As a matter of fact, it's a bloody shame. 